Yo, it's your boy here from the Gangster Times. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. And follow me on my new Instagram channel, Gangster Times underscore Hamid Nasir Khan. The man better known as Meggy. One of the most high profile gangsters West Yorkshire has ever known. For six weeks, armed police outside Bradford Crown Court became a daily sight and avoiding the police convoy bringing the notorious gangster into the city from HMP Wakefield became a factor of a daily commute. So the reason he was in court was because he was going to be given a life sentence for the murder of a West Yorkshire father of three known as Amriz Iqbal. They murdered him whilst he walked along Sanford Road in Bradford with a friend. So Meggie Khan and Tony Grant were in a Kia Sedona and it was being driven by Meggie who had been touring the area during that lunchtime with others in the car. And Mr Iqbal, who was from Bradford, died of his injuries in hospital but his friend Adnan Ahmed wasn't badly hurt in the collision. Judge Jonathan Durham said Khan's actions, said Meggie's actions in deliberately driving into the men was ruthless and barbaric, although he noted that the motive for the attack remained somewhat clouded. The judge also said that Khan clearly commanded obedience and loyalty from others, and his actions demonstrated that he was dangerous and considered himself untouchable. So this trial lasted several weeks. Jury was shown CCTV footage of the fatal collision, and they heard evidence about attempts to recover and destroy crucial CCTV footage from a petrol station. Within hours of the Kia vehicle colliding with the two individuals, it was disposed of, never to be seen again. And later that night, an attempt was made to firebomb the petrol station. And when the arson attack failed, the two men then tried to rob the service station. But the member of staff behind the counter refused to hand over the footage which showed Khan and Tony Grant in the Kia about an hour before the collision. So we're going to get into that in a moment. But I'm just going to continue with a little bit more information. So Meggie, who was 41 years old, of home lane in Tong, was found guilty of murdering Amrez Iqbal and attempting to murder Mr Ahmed. And he was jailed for life with a minimum of 26 years. His accomplice Grant was jailed for life with a minimum of 17 years to be considered before release. There was a third defendant called Salman Ismail of Shipley, who was found guilty of an arson charge in respect of the attack at a service station. And he was jailed for 17 years. Now Iqbal's mother described the killers as animals who had shown no mercy or humanity and the judge said that that was the truth of the impact of the case. So Meg is locked up and he's locked up for a long time and we'll come to discuss the reason why he was locked up and we'll get to see some footage with regards to what happened at the petrol station, the Kia driving around and we can discuss this in further but first of all what I want to do is give you a brief history on Meggie Khan, the notorious Bradford Kingpin. So Meggie Khan is of the Pashtun tribe, which is a tribe based in Pakistan in the northwest frontier province. The people from this area, they're hard working, they're strong and they're loyal. They're classed as warriors and they defend their land to the last breath. Their characteristics are also that they're hot headed, they're very hospitable people and will do anything for anyone. A big respect going out to all of my Pashtun followers out there. So Meggy Khan and what's his history? So in 1999, Khan and his accomplice, Stephen Barker, they were both found guilty of robbery after they stole £20,000 from a Securitas officer outside a travel agency in Bradford. During that four-day trial, Bradford Crown Court heard how Susan Phillips was struck on the arm with a foot-long stick as she collected cash from Kashmir Travel, December 1997. Both men fled and the getaway vehicle was later found in Moresby Street. Officers also recovered a knife and a balaclava. When forensic scientists tested the DNA found on the balaclava, it was matched to Meggie and he was arrested six months after the robbery. Both men were jailed for four and a half years. So that was Meggie's first ever jail sentence. Meggie Khan's history shows that he has 10 convictions on his record for 51 offences. So that shows that he was always involved in a life of crime from a young age. So we're talking in his 20s, Meggie robbing Securitas vans. So that's the calibre of the individual he was. And you know what, I'm going to go even deeper. 
I'm not like none of those bullshit channels where I'm just going to state what's the obvious. But with regards to his Cody during that time, Stephen Barker. In 2013, he was jailed for 16 years for robbing Sona Jewelers in Birkby. So they stole about £100,000 worth of jewellery. He got caught and he got 16 years, so he's currently banged up. And let me go even further. In a few years before this actual sentence, he was sentenced to four years for driving at 139 miles per hour during a police chase. These were associates of Maggie Khan from younger days, Stephen Barker. He was locked up for 16 years now, but he was involved in that Securitas robbery and he was also involved in a 139 mile per hour police chase. So his friends were also criminals. Then, about 10 years later, Maggie Khan was back in the headlines, but this time he was the victim where he was subject of a failed attempt on his life. James Fletcher, alongside his uncle Christopher Fletcher, were accused of plotting to kill Maggie as retribution for shooting. The prosecution alleged that Fletcher's conspired with a close friend called Raymond Daniels and others to murder Maggie and a gunman was hired, but the attempt failed. Maggie was shot in the abdomen at his girlfriend's home. The court heard that James Fletcher was shot in the leg in 2007 and the jury was told. So at this trial, Fletcher told the jury that an Asian male called Raz had put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger, but the gun had jammed. Fletcher then thumped him and he'd been shot in the leg while trying to free the gun. But in a police statement, Fletcher said he'd gone to a flat in Homewood to meet a friend but heard a bang and fell to the floor. So Fletcher maintained to the police that he didn't know who had shot him but in secret police recordings, Fletcher made it known that Maggie was responsible for the shooting. Therefore, in retaliation, him and his uncle went and hired a hitman to shoot Maggie. They were both charged with conspiracy to murder but were acquitted. However, you know on my channel we go a bit deeper. Then, James Fletcher was arrested for having cocaine on him. He had £60,000 worth of coke and his reasoning behind it was that his boxing career had failed due to Maggie Khan hiring somebody to shoot him, therefore turned to drugs to fund his lifestyle. The judge didn't see into that and sentenced him and his codies Adrian Mitchell and Dean Haddington for eight years. Another guy called Nasser Marouf was also charged and was sentenced to 10 years in his absence as just before the trial, he ran away to Pakistan. In 2012, his name popped up again as he was having a feud with another Bradford family. So Zeeshan Khan, who ran this restaurant called Saffron Desi on Leeds Road and David Pemberton, were in prison for 12 years after pleading guilty to conspiracy to possess firearms and ammunition with an intent to endanger life. So armed police seized a Mac-10 submachine gun, a pump-action shotgun, a sniper rifle, along with 75 rounds of live ammunition after they stopped a transit van being driven into Bradford. Now these guys had took the law into their own hands to protect their family with this arsenal weapons after they became embroiled in a feud with... Maggie. So Maggie's name keeps on popping up. So as you can tell, there's a trend developing here. Stephen Barker went in with Maggie in 1999 for robbing that van. Got 16 years for robbing her jewellers. You've got the uncle and the nephew who shot Maggie Khan in the abdomen. They get acquitted. Literally six months later, the nephew gets nabbed with £60,000 worth of coke and gets a nine-year sentence. You've got Zeeshan Khan and David Pemberton. They get caught in a transit van with ammunition and firearms and Maggie's name is involved. So there's always suspicion from here that Maggie Khan was an informant. There was no proof but there was always this suspicion because it seemed as though anything that went against Maggie, people would get locked up for time. The police would find out movements of other dealers. They'd find out the movements of people who were shipping all this ammunition. The police would know everything. And that's where rumours started to hit fan that Maggie Khan was an informant. His name came up again in January 2017 of the fatal shooting of Yasser Yakub, And at that trial was the first time it was brought up that Maggie was a police informant. So I'm going to make a full length video on the Yasser Yakub Maggie Khan situation and how Yasser Yakub died. We've got that documentary you've all probably seen on 
the mainstream media where you got that lad from Huddersfield that went and to be honest, he done an absolute shit job. You could tell he had his own agenda. He was basically trying to bring his own thing. It went from Yasser Yacoub to grooming to God knows what he was trying to do and portray, put people in a bad light. He didn't stick to the top. He was just there to bash the community and I think he did that documentary injustice. That's why I'm going to bring you a bigger and better version, I'm telling you now. But anyway, that was the first time where a defendant at that trial had stated that Meggie was an informant. Or well, Yasser Yacoub was shot dead by a police marksman on the M62 in Huddersfield. And it stated that Yasser Yacoub met up with Meggie Khan to sort out a dispute just hours before he was shot. And they met up in a cafe for an hour and they had a talk and they went on their ways and literally an hour later he gets pulled up on the motor and gets shot by a police marksman. Now there's no evidence out there to say that Meggie Khan was an informant and we're just going by what this defendant said at the trial. Some of you guys might know better. Leave your comments below, share this video with people. Let's get different people's opinions on what they think. Stated at the start of this video, Meggie Khan was sentenced to life and to serve a minimum of 26 years for the murder of Amrez Iqbal, also known as Major. So on October the 3rd, 2018, Meggie was with Tony Grant and four other men and they were in a silver Kia Sedona. It's a people carrier. It was just basically cruising around Sanford Road where Mr Iqbal, just come back from Dubai, was living. They were on a hunt for Mr Iqbal with the intent to deal with him severely but not kill him. They wanted to basically beat him up. I don't know what the beef was about, so if any of you guys again know, leave a comment below, let me know. But they were intent of hurting him. Whilst driving around, they found Mr Iqbal and he was with another man called Adnan Ahmed and they were both on Sanford Road. So as they closed in on Mr Iqbal, Meggy Khan accelerated sharply and swerved the car into both men and he knocked them both down. And then there was CCTV footage shown to the jury of the moment of impact. And then the Kia then decided to reverse back to the scene. Passengers jumped out of the Kia and decided to beat both men on the floor before the car sped away again. And it was a barbaric act. It was violent. It was brutal. And the thing was it was executed in broad daylight. So that's the type of thing Meggy Khan used to do. He didn't used to give a shit. He used to just do things like that. Now sadly, Mr Iqbal died of traumatic head injury, so rest in peace Mr Iqbal. However, the reason why they got caught and what was pivotal was CCTV footage. So, at a nearby service station or a petrol station, which was called Whitehall Service Station in Birkenshaw, that provided CCTV footage of Meggie at the wheel of the Kia Sedona that day, driving around. And when Khan and Grant became aware of this, they were desperate to get rid of this evidence. And they plotted to have two masked youths come to the petrol station and rob that CCTV footage. And when that failed, the other defendant, Salman Ismail, was recruited to set fire to the petrol station. So the judge actually said, can you imagine a more ruthless and potentially lethal arson than firebombing the kiosk at a petrol station a car's length from petrol pumps? So that's the type of severity Meggy Khan wanted to go to get rid of all evidence. So Khan and Grant, they were both convicted of murdering Amr Iqbal and the attempted murder of Adnan Ahmed. So that's a bit about Meggy Khan. The next video I'm going to be making for next Sunday, Sunday session, is going to be Meggy Khan and his involvement in the death of Yasser Yacoub. So stay tuned for that. I want you guys to share this video, like this video, comment and subscribe to my channel and my next aim is to be by the end of next month be on 5,000 subscribers and it's only going to work with the help of you guys so keep promoting my channel it's the gangster times keep it locked keep it real you get me